Hello and good morning. Let's take a look at this diagram here. Well, AB is 12. DC is 4. And this whole thing from here to here is 18. So we don't know what this is, so we're going to call this X. So if the whole thing is 18, then this is 18 minus X from here to here. Okay, so the trick there is to put an X. So you have to know to do that. Okay, now let's set this thing up. Okay, let's think about it. I'm going to go from the little triangle to the big triangle. So I'm going to say 4 over 12. Flat over flat. And then I'm going to do diagonal or hypotenuse over hypotenuse. And that should work. So you're going to end up with 12x here. And then here you're going to end up with 4 times 18 minus x. Okay? So once you do that, you're going to end up with 72 minus 4x is equal to 12x. Now what you want to do is add 4x to both sides, and you're going to get 16x is equal to 72, and then you're going to divide by 16, and you're going to get 4.5. So make sure you memorize that one. The answer is 4.5. Okay? Again, the trick is they give you this whole thing, but we don't want that whole thing, so we got to call one of these x. So this one is 18 minus x. Does it matter which one you call x? No, I guess you could call this one x and this one 18 minus x. I would imagine that would work. All right, now look here. It says find the ratio of the sides. Ratio is a fraction. So I'm going to do this top part over this top part. So the ratio is 3 over 6, which equals 1 half. So it's a 1 to 2 ratio. For every one this one gets, this one gets 2. So this one is exactly twice as big. Find the perimeter. Well, to find the perimeter, you got to add all this up. And the ratio of the perimeter, well, this is 10, that's 13. So that's going to be 17.5, I think it is, divided by whatever this is. And this is 20, 29, I guess that's 35. And if you reduce that, you get one half. So the ratio of the sides and the ratio of the perimeter are the same. Okay? When you think about it, the sides are first degree and perimeter is first degree. So they should be the same. Now, if it was area, um, then you'd have to find the area of both of these. And you would need the height. Okay? All right, let's talk about today's work. Copy this one down and try this one. This is a review. Remember, you have a test this weekend. All right, first thing I should see is what? Dots. So put your dots on there. Those represent your legs. So this is the short leg, long leg. What is this one? That is your hypotenuse. So it's going to be leg squared plus leg squared equals x squared, so x is going to be the square root of 16 plus 49, whatever that is. So 16 plus 49 is going to give you the square root of mm, 65, I guess. Use your calculator and finish that one up. And I think it is 65. All right, let's go on. Copy down everything you see right here. Okay, so we're going to learn three ways, and this is on page 398, three ways to prove triangles are congruent, not similar, but congruent. That means the sides are the same and the angles are the same, right? All right, so look up here. If you look, this one has 45, this one has 45. 
This one has 80. This one has 80. And uh, this one has 55. Okay? So now this one right here, you have all the angles equal. I think there's a uh, angle angle on this right here. Let me just check in the book real quick, see if they have that one. On this one right here, um, just because you have the three angles and you have the three angles on this other one, does that make it uh, congruent? This one, there is no three angles. So we're going to say not congruent. Okay? This one right here, notice that you have a side that's equal to this side. Equal. And then you have an angle, the same angle. And then you have another side that's equal to this side. So this would be called side, angle, side. So these are congruent by side, angle, side. Okay, so we're using these three. So how would side, side, side look? Well, they'd have to be the same. It'd have to be like five, four, three, five, four, three. That would be side, side, side. Side, angle, side, we just did. This is called include it. Write that down. Include it means it's in between. Now, how would angle, side, angle look? Draw these two triangles, and I'll show you. So, we need an angle equal to, say, this angle. Okay? Then you need this angle let's say, equal to this angle, and then you need this side equal to that side. That would be angle, side, angle, and that's how you would do that. So this would be angle, side, angle, and they're congruent by, these, by this theorem. Okay? So we went over side, 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 we went over side, angle, side, and we went over angle, side, angle. All right? Um... Today, you have this work right here. Make sure you put a heading. I want to see that. And I want you to draw the diagrams and show work. All right, we're going to turn our attention now to college algebra. Okay, so on college algebra, we're going to copy all this down right here. Today, we're talking about ellipses. I want you to read hyperbolas on your own. Okay? So you're going to have to watch a video. Go online and watch that because you're going to need that for your test. Okay? That's going to be self-study on that. All right, here are the formulas. If it's written like this, then your major axis, your A is always the bigger one, your major axis is on the X. So your ellipse would look like this. It would be elongated, something like that. If the bigger number is under the B, or under the Y, rather, A is always the bigger one, then the way that ellipse would look, it would be elongated like this, along the Y axis. The Y axis would be the major axis. And then to find the foci, which are always on the major axis, you would use this formula here. It's very similar to Pythagorean's theorem, but it's a minus here, not a plus. So put a star by that and memorize that. All right, let's take a look at one. Copy this one down right here. This one says write an equation of this ellipse. Now this is what I would do. I would draw a graph. The length of the major axis is 6, and the foci are here. So I'm going to go negative 2, 0. I'm going to go over 2 and 0. So your length, and your major axis, if this is the foci, is on the x-axis. So you're going to take half of this, 6, and go 3 this way, and 3 this way. 
Now what you need to do is find your, your minor axis. Okay, so here's what I would do. I would say this is 3 from here to here. Okay, so A equals 3. And B, we don't know. We're looking for B. That's the minor axis. The foci, C, we do know. It's 2 from here to here. That's your foci, 2. So C is 2. So we're going to use that formula. A squared minus B squared equals C squared. A squared is 3 times 3 is 9 minus B squared equals C squared. 2 times 2 is 4. Now, we're going to move this over here and get B squared. We're going to get 9 minus 4 and get 5. So B squared is 5, and B is equal to the square root of 5. And that's your foci, or that's your minor axis, 2 point something. So you're going to go up 2 point something and down 2 point something. So now you have everything you need to sketch that ellipse. Now, they wanted an equation. So to do the equation, since the major axis is on the x, we're going to say x squared plus y squared equals 1, and we're going to put the a squared underneath the, the x-axis here. So 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, the b squared is the square root of 5 b squared, and then that probably should do it. And there it is. Okay? And actually, if you look here, the b squared is 5. So we want to change that to a 5. Okay? There it is. So your a squared is equal to 9, and the A is equal to 3. So it's 3 this way and 3 that way. The B squared is equal to 5, and B is equal to the square root of 5. That's your minor axis, which is 2 point something. And here's your equation. All right, let's go to the next one. This one right here, we're trying to graph it and find the foci. First thing I would do is get it equal to 1. So divide everything by 36. Remember, you got to get it equal to 1 first. So this is going to stay y squared over 36. This right here is going to be x squared over 9 when you reduce it. 4 goes into 4. Now, if you look here, your major axis is on the y-axis. So you're going to say a squared is the bigger one, which is 36. And your b squared, which is your minor axis, is 9. So the square root of 36, a, is equal to 6. And b is equal to 3. Okay? So you got your a and your b. And this is along the y-axis here. So you're going to go up 6, put a dot. Down 6, put a dot. Then you're going to go to the left, 3, to the right, 3, and you have your ellipse. The only thing you don't have is your foci. So it's going to be a squared minus b squared equals c squared. We know what the a squared is. That's 36. We know what the b squared is. That's 9. So the foci is going to be the square root of whatever that is. I think it's 27. So you get your calculator out and see what that is. So if I take the square root of 27, um, square root of 27 and press equals, I get 5.1. So it's going to be up here is your foci and down here is your foci. And that's how you do that. Today, you have some work to do, all right? And uh, let me see where I had that work at. Okay, there's something also, copy this down. This is called the eccentricity, and that is the ovalness. 
How oval is it? And there's the formula. Write that down. I want you to read independently tonight and tomorrow before you take the test on hyperbolas. You can watch a video on YouTube. Look it up. Here's your assignment for today. Copy all of that down and start working right here. So I want you to do the ellipses first. Okay, so I'm going to put 15 to 28 down here because I want that second. So do this first so I can help you and then do this last. All right, have a good morning.